Right, there's my horizontal axis. How far am I going to go on my vertical axis? 21. Now, the highest value I have is 21, but that's kind of an awkward number, right? And I also have to go all these numbers in between, and they're not, they're a bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go up to 25. Okay, 25 is like a pretty round number. I would have chosen 20, but I've got to go past that. Okay, so if I put 25 up here, then again, I, this is easy to break up. I just have to break this up into five portions. So it's going to be something like, yeah. There you go. So now that I've decided on my horizontal and vertical scale, that's a really important step, by the way. Don't ignore it. I can now use this to say, well, I've got all of these points on here, and I can plot them. Every column on my table of values is a point, right? You remember you've seen coordinates before? Um, things like this, 1, 2, right? So this is an independent variable, and the dependent variable, it goes with it, and they appear together. So you can see here my first pair will be 1 and 3.5. So here's one, and you can read off where 3.5 is going to be on your graph. Okay, so let's do this together. Uh, I'll encourage you um, to draw, generally speaking, your axes in pen, and your actual graph, this part in here, in pencil. There's no like, like absolute hard and fast rules on it, but when I'm drawing on paper, I find it quite difficult to do this accurately and rub out stuff. Uh, the last thing you want to do is start to cover your actual graph and white out. It's a mess. Whereas people don't tend to have trouble with drawing axes. I think we're pretty good at those, right? So that's why I yes. put that in pen, put this in pencil. Uh, make sure it's quite firm because this is just fresh in my mind. At the HSC, they scan your papers, right? And I don't know if anyone's seen what happens when you scan pencil. Pencil is reflective sometimes. Um, so you've got to make sure it's quite dark so that it's actually going to come up on the image. Okay, so. You probably will uh, be maybe one or two steps behind me. You've plotted in all your points. If you have plotted them accurately, you should be able to join them together. And this being linear relationships, you should have a straight line. Now, um, this is what my graph looks like. I start here and I end there because this is exactly the values that I've got. I've only got one through six, and um, that's all of the points that I've got. But now we're going to use this, we're going to draw some conclusions off it. Okay? So you can see part B says, use the graph to find the cost of 2.5 kilos. Right? Now 2.5 kilos, where is that on your graph? Get a, get a new color, okay? and if you see, okay, 2.5 should be exactly halfway between there. Yeah, do you see that? So there is 2.5. By the way, one of the reasons why we put units over here on the labels of the axes is so we don't have to put units for every single one of these numbers. So I don't have to say 2.5 kilos, I just say 2.5, and the kilos come from the axis. What I'm going to go do is read up from 2.5. So you may like to get your ruler out and draw up a line there. Oops. Yeah, someone's making that work. Okay, now that's where mine draws up to. Obviously yours will vary a little bit depending on how accurate you've drawn. This tells me I'm looking at about something like $10-ish. Okay? Now I freehanded this, I didn't rule it out, I didn't measure it too carefully. So I'm not 100% confident in my answer. What are often answers are you guys reading off your graphs? Higher? Lower? Just over 10. Just over 10? So I've got just under, so just over. Yeah. Uh, does anyone, yeah, so do we think, yeah? Nine. Nine? Yes, it's very, very close. So in the test, they like vary from like $9 to $11. Okay, so um, when you're being assessed on this, right, obviously the accuracy of your graph will affect how close you end up being. And you can see most of the answers we've just been throwing out, all in the same ballpark, all within like 50 cents to a dollar of each other. And that's fine, right? Um, you will often be supplied with a graph, and therefore because it's all perfect there for you, you need to be able to read that to a reasonable degree of accuracy. But if you build it yourself, so long as you're within a reasonable range, you're okay. And we talk about you know units of measurement and error that creeps in when you measure, and that kind of thing always happens. Okay, so therefore that was part A and part B. I'm going to conclude. I'm going to say approximately. So isn't that part B? Oh yeah. right. Yeah, you used the graph. Okay. Approximately ten dollars. Okay, that's what I'm reading off there because some people have more, some people have less. 
Now, we've answered the question, that's it. But I just want to push on this a little teeny bit more, just so that you can see what's going on and not just be able to answer questions, but think it through. Okay. First thing, remember how I said our graph starts at 1. I actually could go further than that, couldn't I? I can go further to the left. If I drew it, if you continued your line, where would it go? Where would it stop? On mine, my graph looks like it's going to continue and it's going to hit that spot. It's a special spot. When, where the axes meet, we call that the origin. Okay, It's where you've got zero of this and zero of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that a reasonable? So we always do sense checks, right? And it is. You don't buy any oranges, you don't pay any money. That's good. Okay. Um, this can go on forever as well. I want to push on this just a teeny bit more, right? This is sort of extending into the next couple of exercises, but we actually could use this. And those of you who did some of the HSC questions before, I've already encountered this, the ones I put on in blue. We can actually use this to be precise and to check whether we did this right. If I were to write an equation that linked these two values together, okay, I'm going to write that the cost, the dependent variable, is going to be the weight and it multiplied by something, right? Think back to all the financial stuff, like an allowance that you get. What am I multiplying by the weight to get costs? Oh, price. By the price per kilo, right? Which is 350. So I can go like this. Okay. Now, the question I was trying to answer in part B was what if I bought two and a half kilos? I can just substitute that in. We did this in AM1, do you remember? Yeah. You see how the skills connect? So if I say. 2.5 times the $3.50. I know. 875. So this is an algebraic way. This is why we started without the graphs. We started with just the numbers first. Because they're a powerful tool and they can help you check that you're getting it right. I guess my under 10 was just that in the right ballpark. Okay. 